give you an update real quick where we are with the new building. Yes, everybody's, I got my sweeper, I'm ready to go clean. We have found, uh, talked to Wayne Camp, and Wayne said, Eric, it's been the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I've never worked so hard in my life to receive a commission. They've had to go all the way back to the 80s to find the, the title, the, the deed and stuff, and make the corrections. People have passed away and are gone, and then the old church that was before this church and and for the church that has it now, uh, they are gone. They're trying to they had to track down the lawyers that originally wrote up everything. One of them is deceased, and the other one is incapacitated. So they've had to go take a different route through legal means of securing the the proper stuff that we need. So he's thinking we're just la everything's. You know, the banker's going, Eric, how you doing? I said we're good. How you doing? I said we're good. Good, good. We're all ready. I said so were we. Everybody's ready. I said, we're just waiting on Wayne. So Wayne's doing, he's working his tail off to get it done. He's, he thought maybe we might have something this week so we could close Friday, hopefully. But we'll see, okay? When I say the words Ebola, what do you think of? When I say the word ISIS, what do you think of? When I think of the word Hamas, what do you think of? When I think of the word school shootings and destruction, what do you think of? Thank you. However, most people don't. Ebola and stuff like that, that's all I've heard about. What are we going to do about Ebola? I said, what about Ebola? It's a name. That's above every, there's a name that's above that name. The name is Jesus. What are we going to do to protect ourselves? I said, I pray over my food every time I eat it. I thank God for it, and I call it clean and protected every time I eat it. But what, what about, I said, I don't care what about. All of these things that I just said promote fear, F-E-A-R. We live and are born-again, spirit-filled Christians, men and women of God, with a brand-new covenant sealed by the blood of the Lamb, supposed to be walking in power and victory and authority. And yet, something as simple because we are parents or because we're newly eds, welcome home, by the way, Glad to have you back. Did you have fun? To make a good, eh? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's good. That's good. It can strike fear in the hearts of people. If you're a young person, 14, 15 years old or even younger, that haven't been trained up in the admonition of the Lord, not knowing that you have a destiny, hope, and a future, it can strike fear. What am I going to do? What is my future going to look like? What have they handed down to me? You know, Raven's got ever more. You know, she's got, a, she's got a raise. She could have an opportunity to fear, you know. It could come across her path. She could be thinking about those things. There is exactly 300, and I looked every one of them up, 366 times in the Word of God where it says, do not fear, don't be afraid. That's one for every day of the year plus leap year. God is so cool. He knew all that even before we had this calendar that he works on. 366 times it says, do not fear, don't be afraid. Why did he do that one for every day of the year? Do we have an opportunity to be afraid. If the economy goes, starts to go south, uh, what about my this, 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 and that? Okay, what about your this, 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 and that? Our currency still says on and in God we trust. It's still that way. And I would like for us to stay that way 
So I would encourage you to get your tails out and vote November the 4th. Okay? If you haven't registered, find some way to get it done. Again, I will tell you, there is a, they're trying to get 100% participation in 100% of the churches in the United States of America to take a stand and vote. The last election, this is a known fact, 30 million Christians did not vote. We lost the election by 10 million votes. And I've heard everything said, well, you know, my vote doesn't count. Wrong. Your vote does count. I can't tell you who to vote for, okay? You follow your heart, okay? Isaiah 41, if you would turn there, please. Starting at verse 8. Israel has been under attack. Is that not true? For a long time. What happens this little bitty country every time? It resoundingly comes back. And for the most part, it's just amazing to watch and listen. But listen, in Isaiah 41, starting verse 8, But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, You are my servant, I have chosen you, and I want to clarify something right now, that you are, you and I are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So when I'm reading this, you are, say, I am Abraham's seed and an heir, not hair, heir, H-E-I-R, heir according to the promise. We are Abraham's seed, Okay. Said, you are my servant, I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Because all who are incensed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. That includes Isis, Hamasis, and every other Isis and Zisises that are out there, they will be put to shame, okay? This is according to the word. This is not Eric's instruction. This is not my saying. This is what the word of God is telling us today. Behold, all who are incensed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish, he said it's going to be as nothing and it shall perish. What does nothing mean? Nothing. Just nothing. It ain't going to be nothing. Everybody say nothing. If Josh was here, he'd tell me how to say it properly. <clears throat> but I'll get, it. I'll get it right. You shall seek those who, who contend with you, and you shall not find them. Those who war against you shall be as nothing at all. For I, the Lord, you, your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. Fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I am the one who helps you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Say, my Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I make you a threshing sledge, new, sharp, and having teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and crush them, and you shall make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the tempest shall scatter them, and you shall rejoice. Everybody say rejoice in the Lord. In order to rejoice, you first of all have to have what? Joy. If you want to rejoice, you got to joyce. You got to do that first. Joy of the Lord is our strength. He said the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy is the Lord is our strength. Not CNN, not Fox, not whatever you watch. It says the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's not what I read in the Baxter paper bulletin. It's not what I, what I see any place else. It's what the written word of God says. And he says to rejoice in the Lord your God. He said rejoice. The body of Christ needs to joy again. We get burdened down. We hear bad news. We get worried. We get, that's a little thing. Did you hear the little clunking on the piano? When you thought I was playing, didn't you? That's real funny. 
I had a couple bad notes today, so just, I said, oh, I must have listened to that thing too much. You know, it's terrible, 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 terrible. So I apologize to you on that. But it was making a point. There's no harmony in our lives. When we, had, when we allow fear, worry, doubt, and unbelief to come upon us. And you're saying, but I got all of this. Yeah, we got responsibilities. We're buying a new building. We got somebody coming in. And everybody says, what? I've had somebody say, what about the land? You can ask anybody on the elder team. I know about it. I've met with the architect. We're beginning. We, got to have a, we have to have this thing envisioned. God's given me an outside vision. And we'll present that to, to other people as we add a building team, you know, and raise that thing up. But, man, I see, I see, we have 10 acres. Around us, there's a 90 more that I want to I get a hold of because God has stuff for it. I mean, we're a small congregation. We're going to get bigger. But we got stuff to do. The children's home, you know, they still haven't had that meeting yet, by the way. Keeps getting postponed. But, you know, there's something going on. You know, we're just in a, God has opened us a wonderful opportunity for two or three years for us to meet over there because we can get all of us under one roof and not scattered across the street, offices over here. And uh, it's going to be it's gonna be great. I'm excited about that. But everybody says, well, how are we going to pay for it? I don't know. Y'all are givers and tithers. Y'all are blessed because of it. When we tithe, he said, he goes, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. You know, I heard somebody say, I was rebuking the, I was rebuking the devil. And I, God says, well, wait a minute, what are you doing that for? Well, I was rebuking the devil. He goes, no, it's my job. God said, it's my job. He said, I would rebuke the devil for you. Don't put that on your list to do. You got other stuff to do. Don't rebuke the devil. He goes, I'll do it because you're a tither. Don't worry about it. I'll rebuke him for you. You're a tither. That's part of that plan that's there. I said, whoa, that's a little revelation. No, he used to stand there and rebuke the devil. You're a tither. He rebukes. He does all that work for you. Your stuff don't wear out. It just keeps on going. You'll be blessed. It opens up the windows of blessing so you can become a seed time and harvest sower. That's how the thing get paid for. God said, you believe me. I'll take care of it. I said, okay. He said, don't figure it out. I said, okay. You tell that to my wife. He said, you tell her to believe me. I said, oh. So she said, okay, I'm with you. You shall rejoice in the Lord, in the Holy One of Israel. You shall glory, glory. He said, you shall glory. He said, you shall glory. Man, the only time that I glory is when I win. I'm a very competitive person. Now, I like to win. And Father, we just pray for the hog fans today. Still have not won a uh, game in the SEC in two years. <clears throat> so, Father, we just ask for mercy upon them. We thank you for that. And, Father, we do rejoice and we glory because the Buckeyes had an off week and they'll play next week. So we thank you for that. Is that sacrilegious? Okay. I'm sorry. But you glory. You glory when you're on the winning side. Okay? When your focus is on him and on his word and on his provision, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about that. Okay? He said, listen to this. Um, you shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. You shall glory. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none, and their tongue is parched with thirst, I, the Lord, will answer them. I am the God of Israel. I, the God of Israel, will not. Everybody say, will not will forsake not. them. I will open rivers on the bare heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water if I have to. I'll put in the wilderness the cedar, the acacia, the myrtle, and the olive. I will set in the desert the cypress, the plain, and the pine together that they may see and know and may consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. We live in the greatest place in the world. United States of America. Psalms 34, if you would turn over there, please. Verse 1. Psalms 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. Everybody say all. What does that mean? Sometimes, when I feel like it, 
when things are going perfect and nothing's going wrong? All the time. When you get up, when you go down, it doesn't matter. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. But Eric, you know, I got a bill coming up. I said, rejoice. 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 He is the answer. Jesus is the answer. He said, you don't understand. I said, I don't have to understand. The word of God has said it. I believe it. My faith is in action. I'm a tither and a giver. Therefore, the hands of God were designed to be blessed. So I cast all the care over on him because he cares for me. He said, my yoke is easy and my burdens are what? Light. So if you feel like you're beaten down, let it go. Don't be hanging on to it. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. All my fears. How much is all? One or two? Is a part in Indiana. When I was in high school and we were going to the basketball games, they were on every Friday and Saturday night. The whole town, all the people were there. What's that mean? The gym was stinking full. It was full. It's not like that in Mountain Home. Not all of the people are there. Just some of the people are there. Oh, Denise. Delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Check yourself in the mirror. Are you radiant? Maybe. This is one of Pruitt's favorite saving. I said, Pruitt, hey, uh, what about that? Is there, is there enough over there? Maybe. I said, hey, are you asking me? That? Maybe. I love that answer. It was great. I said, Pruitt, do you want to go pet that big hog? Maybe. He did want to ride the zip line. We took him up to the corn maze up in West Plains. It was amazing. It was, it was a blast. He goes, Papal. I said, oh, we'll wait till your dad gets here. <laughs> I saw a guy about half my sign in the zip line. He was, he was only about three foot off the ground. I knew if I was on the zip line, we'd be digging a big furrow, you know. <laughs> hey, it's planting time. What is that? Well, that's a new plow. We just, we just got the big guy from Mountain Home to come up and Right to zip line. I said, he goes, Pap, will you do it? I said, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Let's go get Grammy to climb you up the tall ladder and ride down the big slide. Six times Grammy did it. Big. I'm, you know, that's a pretty big slide, wasn't it? Saw the picture. That was pretty cool. He had a good time. He said, he said, uh, delivered me from all my fears. He said, those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles, all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. What was Amber singing at the end of that one song? And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Good. God is good. Good. Do you know why she kept repeating that? You go, no, because I didn't see it up on the thing. I had no idea why she kept singing the song. You know, Pastor, by the way, those words went up there she was singing. What is up with that? And I said, well, it's called singing a new song to the Lord. It's in, it's in. Oh, really? I said, yeah. So when she does stuff like, well, the words aren't there, I'm not singing it. He was trying to get across the point that God is good and his mercy endures forever. God is good. So, you know, the guys are jamming. We are jamming that thing. I said, oh, my gosh. I thought I was going to heaven. Man. I thought it's rapture time. Jesus, right now, come on, this is good. You are so good, and your mercy endures forever. This is good. It was so he was trying to make a point. She had no idea what I was preaching on. Huh. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. 1 John 4, verse 18. There is no, everybody say no. What's that mean? None. Zip. Nada. 
No fear. Everybody say fear in love. Ooh. Okay, wait a minute. First John saying, okay, wait a minute. I'm afraid to say this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. That's an oxymoron, isn't it, Pastor? What are you, why are they saying? Well, he said there's no fear in love. And uh, he said perfect love cast out fear. So what do I, I, I check your love walk. See, we're walking in love. Well, I, I don't, I, just check your love. Just check your love. Oh, it's between you and God. It's not between me to say, Rita, are you loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, strength? Is it my job to check that? No, it's God knows her heart. Okay? Just check it out. If fear tries to come, and it will come, Joyce Meyer used to say, just do it afraid. You know, do it afraid. I've done that a lot. Just do it afraid. Every Sunday morning, get up. Do it afraid. Okay, I will. Do it afraid. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. That's pretty plain. If we have fear, now there's a difference between the righteous fear of God, you know, you know, just a holy fear of he's he's daddy, you know, he's Abba Daddy, but he's also Father God, you know. So he says. You know, there is a reverential fear that that's okay. Perfect love. Check out your love walk. You know, our love walk, ooh. Jeez. You know, what's the greatest example of love in the body of Christ? Okay? So we lay down our lives for a friend. That's true. But I would say it exists in the marriage covenant. The greatest example of love. How many of you ever know marriage is not the easiest thing in the world that God designed? It's not easy. He didn't say it would be easy. He designed it so he could refine us. Is that right, Roger? We like to be refined. Roger and I, we love to be refined. We are constantly, it's like sticking a rock in a rock polisher. <laughs> It's a little rough in there, you know. It's a little rough in the rock polisher. But we're getting refined because Jesus, who lives on the inside of me, and my spirit man who's been recreated in his image, but I still got a flesh, and I still got a soulish man, my mind, my will, uh, my emotions, my thoughts, my feelings, that's all there. That's got to be renewed daily to the word. Romans tells us to renew our minds to the word because, you know, I, I live with a godly woman. She's an amazing woman of God. I'm so blessed. A lot of other women would have been gone. I don't have to put up with that. No, I didn't beat her or do anything weird, you know. You know, but did I love her like Jesus loved the church all the time? How do you know? Paula goes, no. You know me a long time, Paula, but really? Sometimes you respond in church, sometimes you don't. That's a good time, just you just don't say it. We'll talk afterwards. Right? Paula's like, no. I talked to your wife, man. I know. You know, no. no. Well, you can ask my daughters, they know, you know. Dad's not always been perfect, but 35 years, we're still here. Because I like to be in the rock tumbler with Roger, you know. I want to become, you know, more and more. I want to. I want to get there. I like the refining process. I said, "You do?" I said, "Well, no, not really." You know, wife was gone all week. I had some refining times. You know, since since the new hips, you know, things are things are good. I got two more weeks to try to get my breath up for this three point one mile walk. I did them 1.3 miles the other day. And I was thinking, man, where's Daryl today? <laughs> this right side's a little. I did pretty, my hips did pretty good. It was a, <laughs> the wheezing and the 10 years of absolutely the worst couch potato you ever saw was, is not good. 
you know, but I'm getting refined in that process. So, you know, we had the drapes clean, so I hung the drapes up. I cleaned the house, put a tablecloth on the kitchen table, went and got flowers, cut them off, stuck them in the vase, put a card there for my wife. Um, we've been wanting to have the fireplace painted, and Dale finally finished it, and so she was able to come home. I'm sitting there going, wait. I'm saying, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Lord. That's all you're going to get to know from there. <clears throat> it was a good night. Thank you, Jesus. We went and had dinner. Oh, y'all, y'all went. Psalms 91, this is it. It's none of your business. <laughs> Psalms 91. This is it. This is the last one. Okay. Psalms 91. Anybody ever read that? She loves Psalms 91. Oh, my gosh. That book that you gave Andrea, Miss Sylvia, I got her other one on Psalms 91. Ruth Ward, what's her last name? That uh, you gave Andrea one on trusting God. And... Um, and I, I was looking up to order it, and then it's another one, and I ordered that book on Psalms 91. Yes, that's her. I knew Ruth was in there somehow. But what was her whole name? Peggy Ruth Joyce. If you find this book, Psalms 91, get it. It is the best one I've ever read on Psalms 91. She's a great, she's a good writer. Makes it real easy to understand, and excellent, excellent stuff. Psalms 91, okay? This is one of the other answers to Ebola, ISIS, Hamas, school shootings, raising kids, the future, okay? Your marriage, whatever it may be, relationships, this is the answer. He says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, everybody say Most High, shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Is there a condition there? Okay. Do we have a choice to make? If we dwell in the secret place, well, so I'm born again. Yes, you are. You still have a choice. Where are you going to abide? Where are you going to spend your time? Well, I'm in him and he is in me. Yes, he is. That is correct. However, when circumstances come, or when pain comes into your body, or when the bills come due, or when something happens, or when Ebola shows up in the United States, that's where we need to make sure, are we in the shelter? Are we, am I abiding? Am I hanging out in his presence? There is a very secure place. And I love watching it, Pruitt, with, with Matt. It, it just... It blessed him. He gets, he'd come home and see Daddy. That's where he wants to go. And he, he lays his head right up in there, and he loves it. And Daddy's big old arms come around him. And that is a secure, secure place in him, and he knows it. He knows as long as he's there, everything is all right. Why? Because I'm in the arms of my father. It's going to be okay, no matter what. Because Abba has his arms around me, and I'm safe under his arms. It's a safe place. Safe place. He said, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will and shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Then it says, I will say to the Lord, there is some saying to be done. Okay? My refuge... My fortress, my God in whom I trust. There's some saying to do that. That's a little bit of instruction when the fear comes. You just turn and say, my refuge, my fortress, my God, it's you in whom I trust. And if that fear is still there, you're my refuge, you're my fortress, you are my God. In you 
will I trust? You remind yourself. That's all part of bringing the thoughts, the, the, all those things into captivity. For he says, then after that, he says, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. I turn around and says, for God, you will deliver me and my family from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. And when I'm praying this, I pray this over the congregation. Anybody calls them part of this body, but in my immediate family, I'm praying this. I said, wait a minute. It says, me and my household will be saved. Therefore, they're redeemed from the curse of the law. And I'm declaring, I said, you're going to deliver us from the snare of the fowl and from the deadly pestilence. Pestilence, Ebola, is a pestilence, okay? Call it what it is. He said he would cover us with his pinions and under his wings. Those pinions are part of the wing, you know, that's under that, that eagle, if you will. You'll find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. God's faithfulness is a shield and buckler, not yours. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. His righteousness, his blood, that's all covered. It's all covered under that as well. He said, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that tries to stalk. Why does pestilence stalk in darkness? You know, we got, um, we got all the creepies, you know, uh, the creepy crawlers, as uh, Bill would say. And, and you know when you come up against them, they are they're kind of weird. You know, I ran across one the other day. Yeah, there was a guy that was out, and and uh, he's out in front of Walmart, and uh, and I just walked by, and it's like, and I looked around, and he's just he had this thing in his eyes, and I'm going. So I'm, you know, I look at stand up, Sam. This girl just had heart surgery. Isn't that amazing what God has done. Tuesday, right? How you feeling? Good? Good. She's doing good. Good. But Sam has a personal space, okay? You all do. It's eight, you know, it's about eighteen inches from here. Now Sam is very because, you know, I, I take a step forward. She's okay here. But I'm getting in here. She's like my personal space. You've been there? Okay. Thank you, honey. We're glad you're doing well. But that's, that's where it is when, when I see the creeper crawl. She's not a creepy crawler, but I like going in. The creepy crawlers, when they got the little thing, I go, hey. I start walking. Well, you get pretty close. There's about two foot, and they start. I'm thinking. You know, I'm pressing into the creepy crawler. So I want to see what's in his eye, you know. It's like, hey, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah. yeah, the creepy crawler, they'll just sit there. Yeah, it's, you don't want to cast out a demon in public, you know. It's just kind of, I just let him know. I said, if you need help, here's a card. Call me when you're ready. When you're dealing with creepy crawlers, they're ready to go. You've got to put stuff back in them. If you just cast them out, then they're, they're wide open for sevenfold to come back on them just don't want to mess with them, okay, like that. But it's in the darkness is what I'm saying. The pestilence, all that stuff they, they tried. You know, if you're up at, you know, 2 or 3 in the morning, you know, what, most of the stuff happens at that time. You've been around that, Daniel. You know that's like, oh, dear. Ooh, ooh. Destruction that wasted a thousand each second fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Say, it's not coming near me. Not coming near my house. When I talked a few weeks ago about uh, ISIS, and you know, what if those guys come in and told us to, you know, either deny Christ and we can leave or stay here and die? I had. <laughs> it's funny. We got this is Arkansas, Baxter County. A lot of gun carrying Arkansans, and, and a lot of them got. They get up and said, uh, <clears throat> "I'll be right back." They walk out to the car. They said, "Now," I said, uh, "I might have left, but I'm coming back, and and they will know after that. I'm going to kill them." You know, I goes, I said, you going to give them an opportunity to receive Jesus? I said, no. If they're doing that, then they're not going to, they're in no place to receive. But I'm just going to kill them, you know. I'm just going to kill them, and they'll know not to come back into Baxter County again. Don't mess with the Ozarks. I said, okay. You know, I just soon, those 10,000 angels that are out there, going, hey, come on. See what you got. 
He said, a thousand can fall, just 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is your refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague can come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. He, in other words, you don't even have to stub your toe. If you're in the secret place of the Most High, I believe, this is my own personal opinion, I believe there's a place in God where we don't even have to stub our toe. Because we were walking that close, even in the dark time, the light's not on. And I'm heading down, heading down the hallway. If I'll just listen, Holy Spirit, Eric, there's a wall. Thank you very much. You know, I believe there's a place in God that we can be. If our love walk is made perfect, I just believe it. I believe that with all my heart. Okay, and you may think, oh, man, you're, you're crazy. Okay. Okay. He said, because I've made the Lord God my dwelling place the most high because he's my refuge. He said, no evil shall be allowed to defile me. No plague can come near my tent. For he will command his angels to turn to you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he who holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. He said, because he who holds fast to me in love, he said, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Stand on your feet. 